Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. <laughs> run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Good morning. It, it is up, Tuesday. It is December 12th. Yeah, yeah. I just looked that up. That's why I knew it. This is Run It Back. Stadium insider Sham Sharania. Do you like when I do that? Does it make you feel like on display? Uh, I, yeah, something. It makes me feel something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Not sure what it makes me feel. Hot start. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Lou Will I like on the, the end. same effort. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Chandler Parsons. Thank you. It doesn't feel the same when I do it that way. Lou Will doesn't need that because he's an NBA legend. That's what um, they call me. We, we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of sports happened overnight. And because we love all of you, we watched every second so we could bring this to you. Pelicans got that bad taste out of their mouth from the in-season tournament, snapping the T-Wolves six-game win streak, 121-107. Zion, season high, 36 points. He was 13 to 17. Cat was 17. He had two, though, in the second half. Um, okay, Zion sort of falls in that AD camp of we see greatness, and then we ask, why can't we see it every single night? So now I want you to answer that question. Yeah, we, we see it with a lot of guys, honestly. We see it on the other team, too, with Carl Anthony Towns. Sure. You, you have that much talent. There's, there's expectations, right? And with Zion, we all know how good he is, how explosive he can be, uh, all the rumors about his conditioning. And, and that's just tough. I hate the Stephen A take on, on his Who? weight. <laughs> I, I hate that take, but it is, it, it is, it makes you wonder, right? Like, if, if he would just kind of slim down a little bit, would it prolong his career? Would it allow him to play more minutes? Would it allow him, you know, to play mm -hmm. in more games? And so we see what he is right now, and it's just hard to not imagine him, you know, consistently in shape. Look at LeBron James. How can LeBron James at 39 years old be in the shape he's in and Zion not? So, you, so I understand where it's coming from, and it's frustrating. Um, and it seems like it's all self-inflicted unless there's an unknown health issue that we don't know it's causing him to you know, keep weight on for whatever reason. But look, he's having a great year and I love that he clapped back. He had, he had a tough showing against the Lakers in the in-season tournament. Uh, and this was a huge game for him. That, yeah, that was a horrible performance against the Lakers. Um, and he does, he gets a lot, for some reason we're allowed to fat shame Zion. I don't, I don't know when that happened and I don't even like using that phrase. That being said, it is weird, right? Because you can have a chef, you can have personal this, that, that, and other. Why we don't understand, Lou, how great he could be. I mean, what's what's the problem? He's 23, five and a half, mm. five assists a game, and he's he's finally on the court. You know what I Why mean? Why is everyone so, freaking out? Though? I think it was a narrative that that began from the beginning of his career. You know, so I think it's a it's something easy to poke on when things don't go his way. He has bad games or he has these stretches where, you know, he's not living up to expectations. I think it's just an easy thing for people to poke at is his size. And mm -hmm. it can't be both. We can't criticize this kid for his for his weight and how big he is and then um, credit him when he does these yeah right these big plays where he's snatching the ball from guys and knocking them on the ground to land the ball back up it's like you know that's part of his makeup i don't care what kind of diet this kid goes on he's gonna be a naturally big dude and again he's playing his ass off give the kid some credit at least he's on the floor he's playing at a high level everybody in the nba are gonna have bad games gonna have bad nights gonna have bad stretches he's no different and so right now listen he's almost shooting 60 percent from the field Mm -hmm. And yeah, his team is successful. What is the problem? And I can argue the other way with it, that this physical, the way he plays, the way he's built, that is what gives him the edge, right? Because right. the power. My boy the other day said he's probably the best basketball player of all time that can't shoot, dribble, or pass. And it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? And think about that. He really isn't, he really isn't. And if he was 30 pounds lighter, it, it wouldn't but work. I don't right. think so his body type is That's what I mean. His physicality to be. me almost is a, is a good thing. Like, it allows him. When we was in Duke, people were saying, oh, is he going to be able to play this physical against men? Hmm. He's playing in the ACC or whatever. Yes, he can. He's still stronger and bigger than anybody on the court every single night. So take it with a grain of salt because his physicality is his number one strength. He's obviously not in the best shape, right? Like, I think we can all say that without shaming him or saying but anything. I disagree. Ab ab he was never going to be small. But I disagree. This thing, says, says when you, what? When if you I'm see him averaging 23, 5, and 5. I agree. The production like, speaks for itself. Hmm. I, that, I don't know a lot of guys that's not in shape. I don't see his hands on his knees that. either. Asking I just for think subs when ever, he right? came in the league, the it's shape like that he was in. When you look, when you look, when he when he came in the league, Chumps, none of but us he, looked like that from four years ago. But none he's of us dealt with a lot of lower body injuries, and every time he deals with lower body injuries, the team sees that he he gets out of shape. He he gained. Like, it's just how his body is. But then he always finds a way back, and he's so competitive. I think it's a plus. He wants to play. Like, it doesn't matter how he's feeling, what his body's like. Like, he wants to be out there. Like, I think we saw his competitiveness last night, the fact that people were criticizing him. 
And the way that he looked against the Lakers, I will say this. He didn't approach that game the right way to me. Like, when you watch his lack of aggressive. What did he do last night? Aggr- he was aggressive. He had, how many points did he have last night? 36. 36. Why are we talking about the Lakers still? So that's what I'm saying. I, I hate that when players have these narratives stuck on them and we can't get over it, you know, for the sake of having something to talk about. And, I, and this is not for you, Shams, but this kid, is ba- he's been battling injuries, right? 36 points last night, big time win. It's like, why, why are we having anything negative to say about this kid because somebody else wants to put a narrative that this kid is fat out there? I think the, the situation is that, obviously, the Pelicans in New Orleans, they know something we don't, whether it's him not following the nutrition program, him being late to the, to the weight room he or whatever. He doesn't even look fat. I'm just Taylor. saying, that, that then, Taylor. to me, is why they have a just problem. During the course of your career, did you ever follow the nutritionist that the team provided no, for us I was eating Chick-fil-A on the way home. Every single, what, yeah. All of us are out of shape. Yeah. He has a Every different s- metabolism. <laughs> That may be the problem. And his Shaq was huge. Shaq, Shaq Charles, was, look at these dudes. They, they, were, were, big they were big dudes. bodies. Right. He's not going to be thin. I don't, That's not I don't his know. body. I don't want him to be thin. Chandler he wouldn't no. be as good as ba- at basketball if he were to be thin. Chandler makes a great point. I've never seen this kid huffing and puffing, running down the court. He is, he's a big guy. Yeah. I was about to say huge, and that was going to ruin my whole point. <laughs> but he is a big, he's a, he's a naturally big guy, Shams. And I just want... I just want us to celebrate him a little bit more. He's only he's, 23 also. Yeah, he's gone, like, he's gone through so much in his career, and he's, at, he's now in a stretch where he's hooping. I, I, want, this, I want this to go away. You know it's what? Fair. Let's just wish it away. Yeah. All right, th- consider it done. Or just ignore the bad narratives that are made up anyways. That's yeah. probably the best thing to do. Um, on the other side of things, Cat. That's the other guy that we're always looking to. Which version of Cat are we going to get? Anthony Edwards, of course, is out. So the version we got a cat was not the one you need. Two points on zero of six shooting in the second half. There was not that long to go when he was 27-11, dude. Three-time All-Star. Tell, explain mm-hmm. to me, cat. So my issue with him is the Anthony Davis effect where he, he disappears, right? He right. floats. You don't know which version of him you're going to get. And still, even Carl Anthony Towns, look at his numbers. He's averaging 22 yeah. and 9. He's shooting, I think, 43% from the three, 50 from the field. So he is still, listen, Carl Anthony Towns is an elite offensive player he has the capability of being a good defender it's just i think him is more personality right it's more personal trait it's more people people don't like him people don't like him and rudy gobert no matter weird they're together whatever that is but he still has the chance to you know this team is goes as far as anthony edwards goes in my mind and last night they didn't have anthony edwards so just throw this game out because it doesn't count in my eyes for, for their future and their season. But look, same thing with them. They're having a great year. What are they now? They're 17 yeah, they're... and 5. And he's a huge part of it. As much as they need Anthony Edwards, they need Carl Anthony Towns to be dominant as well. And I'll take 22 of 9 every single night. It's just he's given us a taste of that he can do more than that, right? And we want it to yeah. be consistent. We want it every single night because their team is deep. But it really, the only two go-to guys they have – there's no Austin Reeves. There's no, you know, what I mean, there's no other guy that can go really and go get 25, 30. So this guy has to be every single night. If I'm the Timberwolves, listen, the grass ain't green on the other side. It's only a handful of guys that's averaging 21 and 10 in this league, and mm. 95% of them aren't gonna be available for trades, <laughs> and they're not gonna come to Minnesota um, in free agency. And so, what's wrong, Minnesota? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> It gets cold in Minnesota. It is very cold. The theme of the gets, show. It gets That's cold in Minnesota. Cold. And so, obviously, listen, I, I, I keep these guys together and let them continue to build. If you're looking for another second piece for Anthony Edwards, he's already there. It's weird because, I, you know, <clears throat> even though the T-Wolves have the record they have, it's, I almost don't trust them regardless. Like, when it, for the long run. Maybe now. I respect it. But, yeah. Well, thank you. Hadn't done anything yet. Thank you, buddy. I feel better. Uh, Nuggets Hawks. Uh, Nug- Nuggets at a three game losing skid. It's over now. Jamal Murray, season high, 29, 12, 15. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, <clears throat> career high, 40 points. He was 10, bogey? 17. Mm-hmm. From the three, uh, Jamal Murray had the 29. Um, we, we, we get used to that after a while, right? But maybe not consistently in the regular season. All star status for Jamal Murray. Where do you think that will be? Well, I think after his finals run last year, I think this he was poised for this season for him to take the next step. And when you look, he's he's only played 11 games. Right. That's that's been the big thing for him is when he's in the lineup and he's playing consistent high minutes, 
He's so valuable. He's unbelievable. You see kind of the point guards in the East with Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey. These guys have kind of stepped up. Same thing in the West with Fox. So that's a deep position. So when you start talking about all-star, and it might be tough this year just because the limited amount of games he's played. But mm. you can see the Nuggets' success. We all know how good Jokic is. The Nuggets' success is dependent on him. He's, always, he's got the Chris Middleton effect like Milwaukee. He, he's got to be healthy. He's got to be the head of the snake. He's got to play this two-man game with Jokic. And we see how good they can be. They're the defending champs with him healthy. So 11 games, probably not going to make All-Star playing that, that few of games. Can't it's just injuries with Jamal Murray. Yeah. I mean, when, when he's on the floor, we know what he's capable of. And, and the crazy part about Jamal Murray is when, he, when it's regular season time, it's like 16 points a game, 17 points a game. He always turns it up when it matters the most come playoff time. So I'm not concerned about Jamal Murray. Mm -hmm. I just think for the Nuggets, they just got to float and they got to be have home court and have them healthy for the playoffs. And you see, like you see games with... with you know, Jokic, Jamal Murray out, then Reggie Jackson's all of a sudden unbelievable. DeAndre Jordan had a huge game. So they have the infrastructure, they have the roster of these experienced guys that have been there before that they're going to win games with or without them. But to be a true contender and to go back to back, Jamal Murray's got to be healthy. Um, I believe, like, you know, as defending champs, they're the best until they're not. So I know they had the three game losing streak. It happens. But you said something. Shams said they just need to float to mm -hmm. get to the postseason. Do you agree with that strategy? Yeah, I agree with that. <clears throat> I would say fine tuning. Yeah. You know, they, they obviously they know what it takes to get there and, and they know what it takes to bring it home. And so I, I don't think this team is concerned about where they are in the regular season. I think they know what they're capable of. They know what, what star power they have. They know what, what they're going to get out of their bench play and their role players. And so even though they're dealing with some injuries and, and a little bit of turbulence, I think this team is still fine tuning. And once it gets to a point where it, it gets real at the end of the season, they'll lock in. Then they can turn it on. Uh, Trey Young was ejected, got a second technical, missing, uh, arguing a missed call on a play. So here it is. Y'all tell me who's right here, ref or Trey? I mean, look, he did the James Harden thing where he initiated <laughs> the contact, right? He kind of grabbed his arm, and they, it, it could go either way here. Uh, but. <laughs> I don't know if it's who, and then again, I didn't watch this, so I don't know if it was, it was a lead up, if there was missed calls before or what, but again, this is, Trey, you can't do this. Your team is dependent on you. You have to be on the floor. You know, 26 minutes is not enough. Or so for your team to have any chance, especially beating the Nuggets, you got to right. have your best player on the floor, and he wasn't available just because of an emotional breakdown, but uh, he, he can't afford to be doing this. It seemed like a very calm technical, though, as far as those go. <laughs> I want to. I want to challenge. I want to challenge my little brother to turn the page with the ref wars. You know, this is part of this is part of his reputation now, and I hate that because he's he's one of the best players in the NBA. And sometimes when you when your team is not having a lot of success, this becomes the only thing that mm. people like to talk to talk about. Um, and it's and it stains your name and it stains your reputation. And and not only that, it gets exhausting playing eight against five every night. And I've shared the locker room with Trey. I know how passionate he is about basketball. I know how passionate he is about winning. And his reputation gets misunderstood because of things like this. And so I want him to be the bigger man, turn the page on, on these type of interactions, man, and just go lead your team to a bunch of wins. And knowing Trey, too, we're not talking about him as much. Like those point guards I just mentioned, no. you know, Darius Garland was the all-star last year. And he used to, like, I feel like Trey Young, when he came in, everyone was talking about him. And now that's, that's kind of calm down a little bit and it's frustrating their team's not winning they make the move for DeJounte Murray that hasn't really panned out so it's frustrating and like Lou said he's not a bad dude so I hope he can figure it out get and, and eliminate the refs they're not going to change the call right no, I've never not. seen a ref be like oh you know what okay Trey let's let's you know, be amazing yeah, if that happens my bad <laughs> it's not going to happen so don't let it affect your mental don't affect your game all right fair enough God, a little advice corner we just had impromptu I, I like that uh Cavs magic don't look now, but Orlando, what is happening? They beat Cleveland. Paolo Bencaro had 20 and 10. Franz Wagner, 19 and 8. And Dar Darius Garland, he did have 36, 6 and 5 in the losing effort here. But Magic are 16 and 7, Lou. They are second in the East right now. I put them in that Timberwolves sort of umbrella where it's like, do we take them seriously, though, as contenders? Not yet. Not yet. In order for them to be contenders for me, this is going to be a long play game. You know, they have to make a splash in the playoffs. They got to make sure the league understands that they, they have arrived and they're here and, and them being second in the East is a real thing. And so, you know, any, any team can have some success 20 games in. Right. Um, and then you start dealing with some adversity, start dealing with some injuries, and then that's when you begin to see what your team is really made of. And so for me, for this team to make sure everybody takes them serious as a contender, they got to make a real splash in the playoffs. Who's on the show tomorrow, Chandler? 
We got Jamal Mose on the show tomorrow. I love that. Jamal Coach of the Mose year, Mose. Jamal Mose. The tease right there, promo. right? We that's love that's it. Yeah. very professional. Uh, last week, Lou and Danny Green were here. They said they're not yet ready to consider Paolo Bancaro as the dude you build around. What do you think about that? I said that. Yeah, you I really disagree. did. I was, <laughs> in, uh, I was in the moment. I disagree. I mean, look, you look at what he did last year. Now he's, at, he's averaging 21, seven and five in his second year of the yeah. NBA, leading this team who was historically bad the last two or three years, literally until the day they drafted him. And they struggled last year, but this kid can do it all. He's versatile. And you look at the team, the reason we don't trust him, Michelle, is because they don't have that bona fide star. They okay. don't have that all star. So, so but are so you, you in agree agreement? then? Is that what No, that because I do think Paolo is so uh, young and his future is so bright. And then you throw in a Franz Wagner. But Wagner. Oh, Wagner. 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 I love yes. him too. So when you have two unselfish leaders like that that are all growing together and it seems like they don't really care who gets the credit. It's like it, it's it's a young team. It's fun. And they defend, man. And Cole Anthony off the bench has been a spark plug. And this is without Wendell Carter. This is without Markel Fultz in the lineup yeah. consistently. So this team is deep. They add guys like Joe Ingles, who that does wonders for that locker room and the leadership. So I, I think Paolo is a great foundation piece for the future. He's versatile. He can defend. He got the USA experience this summer. So I disagree. I think he's great. I think Orlando, what Jamal Mosley has done to that team and that city, I'm from there. Place isn't awesome. And I haven't felt this buzz or heard this buzz since the Dwight Howard. Wow. That, that time. So listen, are they going to go to the Eastern Conference Finals this that's year? A, are they going to contend? That's, that's a big statement. I'm telling you. Because it was jumping during those days. So I'm jump, jump. I'm telling you, people are back. Look at the crowds. When you watch Orlando Magic game, okay. it is a different atmosphere now in I that pay arena attention now. Better. Yeah. Are they going to go to the what the finals this year? I don't know. Like Lou said, it's a long play with this team. They're still so young. I'm not going to put all my trust in them this season, but they're building something great. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you can't knock what they're doing so far. Um, Darius Garland had 36. Injuries has sort of been the thing that's plagued him so far. He has made an all-star team, but as far as ceiling goes with him, Lou, where, where are we putting that? When healthy, I think he's a perennial all-star. I think this is something that he can do every year, you know, playing at a high level. He's been one of the leaders of this basketball team and keeping them afloat, you know, but Cleveland, very much like Orlando, they got to make a splash. You know, they got to make a splash in the playoffs for people to take these things serious. I don't want this to become a thing where, you know, they're playing hard up until all-star to get all-star looks. And uh -huh. then after that, they kind of flame out. And, and I think we saw that last year um, when they had guys being considered for all-star. And then after that, kind of fizzled out um, going into the season. And so what's what's his ceiling? I think he can be a perennial all-star. This is something that he can do every year, but he got to get this group over the hump and he got to stay healthy. Um, Cavs are 13 and 10, seventh in the East. I, I know that we're on sort of Donna and Mitchell watch. And we have, oh, we have been since he got there, basically. Like, ooh, where's he going to go next? What's going to happen? Should we be concerned? Should they be concerned? Well, th there's real pressure overall in, throughout this organization. And with, with Donovan Mitchell, his expectations for this team is trying to compete for a championship. Even though J.B. Bickerstaff last year led this team to their first playoff berth, since, LeBron, like, without LeBron James, first playoff berth since the late 90s. So to them, they're making progress every single year. And even now, they've won nine of their last 13. They haven't had a full roster all year, like, consistently, health-wise, throughout the whole season. Now they have a back-to-back -back against Boston tonight and then again on Thursday. So their schedule is tough. Um, so I, I think this is a team that's still trying to find itself. But there is a lot of pressure throughout this organization. And it's to compete and it's to win. And a lot of that has to do obviously with the future of Donovan Mitchell. And the problem is when, when you decline to sign an extension like that, that basically yeah. that tells you everything, right? Like he's not sure about the future here. And you could even tell he's just got a different feel. He's got a different buzz. It doesn't seem like he's as happy as he was last year here, which is weird to me because like Lou said earlier, the grass ain't always greener on the other side. And when you look at this Cavs team with Evan Mobley, Darius Garland, they have all this young talent, Jared Allen, they have these foundational pieces that they could really grow together. And I think that loss to the Knicks last year in the first mm. round was devastating. And I'm actually kind of concerned and confused about their start this year. I thought they were going to use that as fuel, go into the offseason, take this huge jump, and be one of these teams we're talking about. And for whatever reason, they're not. And it does start with Donovan Mitchell, but my guess is he's out of there. I, I, think, I, I think he's out of there. And, and so it begins. We keep our eye on it. All right, scoops time. Shams, scoop. You know, sometimes you have scoop shams during the day where I want to text you and be like, I don't like this one. And this first one with Mitchell <laughs> Robinson, I did not care for this one. <laughs> Your Knicks. Yeah, this I, is. That was bummed. This is this is a tough one because Mitchell Robinson had, I think, a great season. Six points a game, ten plus rebounds a game. He averaged <laughs> almost two blocks a game. Um, I think for for the Knicks, what's tough here is. 
left ankle surgery. He's had a lot of ankle problems. He's had a lot of foot and knee problems. He's out the next eight to 10 weeks oh, at least. Um, and you never, ankle's not a good spot for a surgery. But he's a big dude. How come he doesn't get a bunch of crap? It's tall, not wide. Well, there was the science behind it. Well, that's why. That's why. That's why. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'm, that was on me for asking. By the way, it's like Tyree Kill people. last night walks to the game. I, 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 I can't sit next to him. Honestly, we are I separating you two. Tyree day. Day. Kill walks <laughs> to the game holding McDonald's before the game. And okay, then, but and then he gets hurt. And then he, I'm saying, then he gets hurt. It's like, it's funny until something like that happens. Then all the media is going to jump on it him. It's bad like, optics. It's like, stop. I know. It's just, just eat salad. It's and bad optics. On you. Um, okay, I can't believe it. We're, we're officially, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel with John Morant. It's coming. He's going to be back. He's he's going to be, you know, barring any issues. Mm. John Morant will make his season debut December 19th next week in New Orleans. And he's been ramping up. I'm told he looks great. He's been playing three on three, playing four on four the last few weeks. He's been ramping up. He's ready to go. And another thing, Marcus Smart has been out with a foot sprain. I'm told he's going to be back shortly after John Morant. So you're starting to see this Memphis team go off to a, N not a great start this year. We all know about yeah, it. Yeah, fair. We know how many injuries they've dealt with. But now John Morant's on his way back, going to make his debut next week. Marcus Smart shortly after will return to the <laughs> There There's uh, six games out of the 7 to 10 seed. Is there any way they can get there? No. You know what? I'm, I'm really fascinated that Shams has all this information. It's, yeah. it's, it really <laughs> fascinates me because as a player, Chandler, you know we go into the locker room and we're looking at the the uh, the board, yeah. and we have no clue who's playing. Right. That's amazing. But he knows a week before. He, he knows it a week before. It's so yeah. fascinating that you that you're able to get that information. I'm Sean. starting so to look, think it's because you two don't pay attention yeah, closely. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> I think it's on you guys. I'll tell you this. <laughs> no, it's it's literally Sham scoops. Shams yeah, we don't has, have our own he got, segment. We got that's the right, scoops, right. man. Keep acting like this. You're never gonna have yeah. Chandler. Gabe Vincent, a lot of street clothes. And uh, when will that stop? <laughs> He's only played four games so far this year. He's been dealing with swelling in his knee. Um, he last played on October 30th. I'm told he is targeting a return next Monday uh, on the 18th against All the right. New York Knicks. Uh, that's damn also, it, you're good, Sean. That's <laughs> also the night. That's also the, that's also the night they're going to raise the in-season tournament championship banner. Oh, Do big we have a night for Lakers. Big, big, big banner, little James. banner. It's a and full Anthony time. Davis. What do they? What'd you call? It's like an eternal banner. No, a forever it's a forever banner. banner. Forever yeah. banner. So, so, let, so like a flyer they're gonna put so, on the window. So let's say they win again next year. They're just gonna put the year. That's that's yeah, it. They're just not add. Add okay, another it's banner. Okay. But if you that's, never have another one, it's just then the one year. This is gonna be 2023. Yeah, well, it's gonna be that. Too. Okay. But I, I think cool. the Lakers really are looking forward to this return. He's supposed to play a big role on this team. I mean, this is a guy that was supposed to go in and compete potentially to start with D'Angelo Russell, but now he's gonna come off the bench. And I've, I'm eye on this situation because you think about the trade deadline, right? You think about D'Angelo Russell's future. You think about Gabe Vincent there. A lot of it has to do with how he comes back and how he plays. I'm just picturing, what? like, Washington winning it next year and putting a floor-to-ceiling banner. <laughs> hey, what, you know what? It's, it's perspective. Gonna be, it's going to be different for every team. <laughs> it's 100% going to be different. It should be. Some teams are just better. Um, P.J. Tucker not pleased with the situation right now. P.J. Tucker has been expressing frustration about his situation, his role with the Clippers, from what I'm told. Um, both sides, the Clippers, Tucker, they're discussing how to resolve the situation, whether it's a bigger role with the Clippers or elsewhere. And there's wow. multiple contenders monitoring him. We know about P.J. Tucker. The last 12 years, literally 12 years straight, he's been playing big minutes. He's been a big-level contributor, um, 2021 NBA champion. He's a guy that's used to playing. He's not used to getting DNP. He's been DNP Ooh. coach's decision for six straight games watching. He's remained professional, but uh, Has he's, he? he's we hopeful. We know about it. He's hopeful yeah. for a resolution here. Lou said earlier, where do you want to see him go? <laughs> Put a... Orlando. Put him on Orlando. Mose, get him on Orlando. Put That's exactly the type of guy Orlando. that they need on that team for the playoffs, for the for this stretch. I would love to see him on the Magic. Well, tomorrow you can plead for I'll, your I'll case. Yeah, obviously, write it down. And I'm always a big fan of, like, our OGs going out on their own two feet on, on their own. I, I don't like this for, for P.J. Tucker <laughs> being at the, you know, possibly. Well, this is the end of his career. He's 38 years sure. old. Who knows how much basketball is left. But I, I, I would like to see him go out on his own, too. December 15th, it's, I mean, God, it's right around the corner. Most free agents have become trade eligible, and that means we immediately look north to Canada. Uh, what can we expect? Michelle, we've been talking, I think we've, we've been talking about Toronto for the last two mm -hmm. years. 9-14, and 14, off to another slow start. I think it's fueled definitely teams around the league with the belief that more than ever now, 
one of Pascal Siakam or OG Ananobi could be traded. Got um, to. Some of the same teams are really going after both of them. Atlanta, Indiana, Sacramento. And my sense is it's likelier that Siakam has moved over OG Ananobi. Um, but we'll see. The, the way Toronto operates, they're going to take this up right to the deadline in February. And, and I think you lose Fred Van Bleet for nothing last season yep. in free agency. I think everyone around the league is very curious about Masai Ujiri. And this is the date with the Lakers, right, where D'Lo and Rui, those guys can be moved? D'Angelo Russell can be moved December 15th. Rui Hachimura can be moved January 15th. Um, I don't think Lakers are suitors for either of those two, (laughs) but I think overall, for sure, the market opens up December 15th across the league, and I think everyone's looking at Toronto. I mean, we've been talking about Toronto for Toronto year. Toronto and Chicago, just do it already. Every year. For God's sakes. It's like a fire sale, but that never happens. I mean, this is the year. I can feel it. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, he returns, friend of the show, Mac McClung, standing by. <laughs> you two need to be Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Get on my left. Matt McClung fades the dunk contest. I'm too flat. Gets upstairs. Get on my left. Oh, he is back. Of course, he's the slam dunk champion from last year. Played for the Bulls, Lakers, Sixers, 2023 G League champion. And right now, by the way, Mac, uh, G League player of the month. So what's the deal? When, when do we expect you back on an NBA floor? Talk to us. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the answer to that. Uh, that's, that's all in other people's hands. But, you know, all I'm doing right now is just staying ready and just making sure I'm prepared when that moment comes. Stay ready, be ready. Mac, you, you had a stint with the Lakers um, a few years ago. What was it like being around LeBron? What was it like being <laughs> on the Lakers and, and just, just, you know, be, being on a team like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was my first year, so it was, you know, being a kid from Gate City, Virginia, it was like uh, I was in a video game or something, hearing hearing them talk in a meeting for the first time. So um, I think it was really cool for me to kind of just grow up and see, like, what it takes, like, a guy that's the best in the league, um, you know, in the film room for however long he is, in the first one in the gym, like, it was like, man, this is this is what it is. Like, there's no, this didn't, this didn't just happen. So that was really big for me to kind of see. Also, guys like Rondo and other vets like Carmelo, just how they kind of took their day-to-day, it was really cool for me. LeBron's also called you um, one of the greatest dunkers ever. Mm. So line me up here, you against LeBron dunk contest or you and LeBron facing off. How, how, how does that look like? Man, uh, first, that's, that's a big honor. I'll tell my kids about that one day for sure. But, um, yeah, I'll probably say, like, you talking about right now, LeBron, or like prime? Man, LeBron? Don't be, we're just talking scared. Either it. way, well, right now too. Either way, I'm Save taking it, Matt. Save Save it. Save Either way, I'm taking you, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think young LeBron maybe maybe has it, but um, right now I think I, I could probably get. It's a him. humble guy, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also played last year with a little stint, stint with Philly. What was your favorite part about that? Did you ever get some run with with the big fella, Joel? How was that experience? Not, not much, really. I think I got, I got, um, you know, I got my first NBA game where I got over like 25 minutes, and you know, it was like, it was probably just the best, best game I've had in my career, and it was just like, you know, once, once you get a little, you know, taste of the NBA, you just want more. And I was like, they gave me a lot of confidence that game. I had a, a decent game, so it kind of gave me confidence that hey, I can uh, make an impact. Yeah, and also the last game against Brooklyn, you had that that twenty piece right there. That's not easy to do in the league. Not a lot. A lot of guys can't say they did that. Was were you just in the zone that night? What, what was going on there? Yeah, that was the first game I got more than that twenty was... minutes in the NBA. So it was just like, um, you know, I got to take advantage of this. And you know, being in the G League most of the year, it's like um, you're never downgrading what you're doing at the moment, but uh, just being ready for like, hey, I'm doing this because I want to be in the NBA. Mac, I played in the G League when it was called the, the D League, the developmental league, and they were still trying to figure it out and get it off the ground. And uh, we were going through a lot of, uh, a lot of growing pains when I, when I played in it. What's, what's, what's G League life like now um, versus the NBA life? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely grown from the D League, and, you know, they're doing a great job with that. I would say, like, it's, it's a grind. You know, you're, you're going to motels, not hotels. You're... You're doing all these things, but it's beautiful because it's like, a, as you know, it's a bunch of underdogs and they're all trying to make it. And there's something beautiful about being being in the gym with these guys, like everybody's chasing a dream. And it's it's it's, it's special in a way. Obviously, I want to be in the NBA, but I'm definitely not not proud to be in this league. 
Mac, you've spent some time around some great players. Another one, Steph Curry, 2022 Warriors training camp. What was that like spending time, not, not only with Steph, you got Draymond, Clay Thompson, that team, you know, ends up, uh, you know, winning a championship. But like, what was that like? That was really cool, too. I've been lucky, man, to be around <laughs> some of the greatest players of all time in training camps and years in the NBA. So uh, just seeing those guys, the biggest thing I noticed with them was just, um, you know, they would take their time out there to talk to me, like a guy that's like on an unguaranteed contract trying to help me, which just shows like kind of, you know, their kindness and um, attention to every detail. Everybody in that organization was really just professional. And you can you see why people win and some organizations don't. So, um, yeah, nothing but great things to say about them and uh, being a part of that. I know I know you think Steph Curry's a GOAT. Do you think he's the best point guard in NBA history? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter because there's no right answer at the end of the day. Everybody has their own opinions, but I, my personal opinion, I do think he is. You know what? That's all that matters. The answer think, is yes. If you, yeah, you think it, you think it. Um, look, people that may not have been familiar with you are very much familiar with you now after the slam dunk contest last year. You won the whole thing. Uh, do you expect to be invited back? How does it work? Do they talk to you? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. They uh, they contacted me last year, and if um, if they do this year, I will just we'll make a decision from there. You, you, if you do get that call, Mac, do you have some? Some other crazy dunks up your sleeve that no one's seen yet before? Um, maybe a couple. I'm, I would definitely go to work on it, and, you know, I'd make sure I, I put all the effort in to come with something that, that hasn't been seen before. And also, uh, guys like Shaq, Reggie Miller, these legends, they're talking about how you saved the dunk contest, which you did, by the way. How does that feel hearing that? Oh, it's, in, it's an incredible honor. I mean, the dunk contest, I think, as little kids, just something I would just always just love watching. I don't know, there's something about it. It's just something so magical. And I was like, I was really in awe when I got to be a part of it. I was like confused. I was like, okay, like, yeah, I'll do it. But um, no, it was it was so cool, man. It was just like a it was a larger than life moment really for me. Did you have a personal fave from any of the things you did? Uh, the dunks I did. Yeah. Definitely the first one. I was so nervous, man. I just <laughs> thanking God it went in the first time. I think that's one of the biggest things is getting that first dunk to go in. I mean, that is you. When, people, nervous, when they miss like... it and they miss it, just it, it goes down. No, that's crazy. He made all his dunks. He made all of them. Like, first all of them. try. First try. I feel like you lose momentum. Like, how, like was As that, viewers, was that big grateful. for you? Was that big for you? Like, I know I have to make it on the first try. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, like you said, it's like deflating to miss. And I'm not going to say if I did it again, I wouldn't miss. I mean, it's like it's partial of luck and, you know, preparation thing. But I think that momentum of getting your first dunk really is is everything. You can breathe a little bit easier. Um, in high school, you went viral many, many times for the dunk. So much so that Drake, I just love saying this, slid into the DMs. What Drake, what are you doing? Uh, but he asked for a jersey. So, A, did you send him one? And, B, were you worried about the Drake curse at all by sending him anything? Um, <clears throat> I wasn't aware of the Drake oh, curse. Oh, it's bad. Uh, well, no. no, no um, <laughs> the man literally posted a picture of Otani two days before two days. he signed with the Dodgers. <laughs> and then he went to the Dodgers. The <laughs> it's cursed. <laughs> but, no, I, I didn't I didn't know about that. But, um, yeah, no, he... It was it was cool to hear that reach out, you know. I think I was I was actually listening to a Drake song when he slid in my DMs, oh. and uh, it was just a cool moment for me and my my hometown boys. They're all in the car with me, so it was it was really cool. Okay, that's actually pretty funny. Has anybody else uh, famous sort of messaged you in any capacity that we need to know about? They Chandler likes to know about to people's dating. Really. Yeah. <laughs> I know it doesn't have to be romantic. Chandler might make it awkward, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. It could be about dunks, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that night I think there was there was a lot of messages. I didn't even really get on too much about it. It was just you know there was so much going on. So it was it was a bunch of players just showing a lot of That's you awesome. know showing a lot of love. Mac, I, I know how much you take the rest of your game. You know how seriously you take it. Do you feel like people just view you as a dunker? Like how do you go about every day proving people? You know, there's a lot more to my game. There's more that I can do. Yeah, I mean I think. Maybe when I was younger, it bothered me. And obviously the dunk contest, people are going to think of me as dunk first, absolutely. But it's not like I'm really trying to prove anything to the people that don't know anything about me. Like, if you really love basketball, you research, you know, you'll be like, oh, what is this kid about? You'll go look. You'll go look at my stats. You'll look at the opportunities I've been given and what I've done with them and um, go from there. I'm not really, I'm really, I'm not playing to any type of gallery right now, just <laughs> trying to be the best version of myself. 
On to the important stuff. <laughs> Your cousin Riff Raff. He once nicknamed you Ivory Aller. Your cousin is Riff Raff? His cousin is Riff Raff. He once nicknamed you Ivory Iverson. That's pretty good, actually. You cool with that nickname? How did, you, how, how did that come about? Yeah, Lou, that's not my cousin. Uh, so All right. uh, he just he just said he was my cousin, and <laughs> no, I was gonna say even better. I have not I have not got away from that in years. But do you even okay? Do you even know him? Not really. What <laughs> is happening? <laughs> Never met him. What is happening? Mac, have you ever met him? <laughs> Never. <laughs> That's hilarious. How did we oh, get this here? Is great. Oh, oh. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I knew nothing about okay, this. Okay, well, listen. Question Not your Riff cousin Riff Raff. <laughs> yeah. Do you like the nickname? You know who Riff Raff is. I've heard of Do I? Riff Raff. I'm just some Riff Raff, <laughs> man. Here you go. It's, not uh, it's, my it's fine with me. I mean, it's, I don't know. Whatever people want to call me, I don't really look into it oh. too much. <laughs> That's yeah. That's that's hilarious. You bring that up, man. <laughs> it's trust me. What my I don't even know what to do with this right now. So he's just been going around. Why would why? Why, why would, would he do that? Why would he do that, uh, Mac? Why would he do that? He probably so did after the dunk It gets the people going. He probably did yeah. after the dunk contest. It's racial. It's racial. It's always racial. All right. So we've learned something today. I feel like that was the biggest thing. But Ivory Iverson's <clears> kind of a. Do you like the nickname, by the way? I don't hate it. I mean, it's a, it's a compliment for sure. I mean, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I kind of love it, <laughs> Mac. This has been awesome. Um, our entire research department's obviously fired, so we appreciate you for <laughs> pointing that out to us, and we'll make sure it doesn't happen. We want to see you in a dunk contest yeah, 100%. again, bro. Hundred percent. Make that. Matter of fact, I'm not watching unless you're in it. So get back in that thing. Strong take. I like that. Thanks, Mac. Appreciate the time. Good luck rest of the way. Uh, we'll be back. Say what? Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. Run it back. Jalen, can you walk us through what led to the ejection? To be honest, I'm not sure. But I wish I would have got my money's worth. I always thought my first career ejection would be something a little more exciting. You know, maybe a tussle or something, you know, guys get folded up, go to the ground, not some over emotional ref who had a bad day. Right. All right, Chandler. All right. What do you think about that? By the way, that sweater, I would live in that sweater. It's so cozy. I mean, look. I like it. Oh. It is funny because when you think of an ejection, yeah. you think of like an outburst. Dramatic. You, you want to earn it. And it's it's a lot of money. You're fine. You're kicked out of the game. So you want to, it needs to be something bad, not this. And again, refs are humans. They have their own personal relationships with players. And sometimes enough's enough. And sometimes a ref could say, all right, no more. And then if you literally say one more word, they're giving you the heave ho. So <laughs> this, this, I don't know exactly what was said, but this did, this did seem a little light. An over emotional ref. I yeah. like that he delivered it in one tone. Uh, Anthony Edwards, I feel like I know the answer to this one already. Uh, said he does not like being referred to as an all star, that, that the uh, all star game selection didn't count. Somebody got hurt, and I was the fallback guy. What do you think about that attitude, Lou? Listen, little bro, <laughs> take them how they come, all right? Take it from a guy who's been a finalist three times and never made it. Take the all star selections however they come. And trust me, it's going to help in your renegotiations to be able to say, I'm a one-time, two-time, three-time all-star. You should pay me X amount of dollars. Who cares how you got in? You were in. Take them. And when you got that bonus from your shoe deal, it didn't say replacement. It said all-star. So take I'm a little bit surprised by both of these attitudes. Interesting. Again, on his on his resume and his Hall of Fame, Forever, it's right? not going to say replacement. It's just going to say. I would love for mine to say one-time all-star. Yeah. Yeah. So take huh. it. I mean, it's like president. You're forever that. That's your title. All right, fair Take enough. I, I, you changed my mind. Uh, Pelicans forward Trey Murphy the third said this about playing with Jordan Hawkins. Quote, there's maybe one other duo that can shoot better than me and Hawk, and I still have to have an argument He's with like, that. What now? <laughs> Who's well, the duo he's referring to? Clay and Steph? I, it could be yeah. anyone. There's a lot. That's what I'm assuming. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this Are is... they on the same, st like, in the same... Planet? Galaxy? Uh, same universe? Tier? No. I'm glad this says Chandler. Yeah, that's Listen, a good point. They both can shoot. Trey Murphy can shoot, and the other kid, Hawkins, and he puts them up. Okay. They can shoot, but I mean, this is a ridiculous comment. It's, like, you, it's a small sample size. We need to see a lot more. They're also referring to maybe the greatest duo of all time. Maybe they're the only ones that are ahead of them. Listen. Confidence is great, but he's drunk. <laughs> I like that he said, I'll still have to have an argument with that. But also, when you look around, like, the shooting duos, like, 
Middleton and Dame, like, uh, I don't know, the shooting, they, they can shoot, but like, again, just, we're talking Kind of love it. We're talking about a teeny sample size. Do it for a couple more years, then maybe I'll buy it. <laughs> Shams and I are Then maybe like, I'll buy it, but they both are snipers. I like it, I like it very much. Look, love if you the confidence. I was gonna love say, if you don't vote for yourself, who will? That's the one thing they teach you in high school. All right, Lou, you're up. Rashid Wallace. He's kind of taking the blame right now for Draymond's behavior. Quote, that's our fault. I saw that. He grew up in the 2004 Pistons locker room. One of his best friends was the son of the GM, so he was around us. That's why he's doing the bully bleep he's doing now. Do you agree with that? Uh, everybody has influences, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure Draymond took some of that influence and, and carried it with him, but I don't recall this being his, his temperament in high school, I don't recall this oh, being okay. his temperament at Michigan State. Um, he did I, have a couple things at Michigan, <clears throat> didn't he? Where he like sort of uh, physically. It, I mean, it up. wasn't it wasn't his calling card as much as it is it Fair. is now. But I, I'm sure he drew some inspiration from being around those guys and and seeing how they operated. And once he got into a position in his career where he felt like he can express himself in the same manner that he uh, he drew from that. So I, I, I would say I would say sure. I'm right. All right, I like it. Chandler, you're up. Mavs center Derek Lively said he would rather be 4-5 than 7-1. We wouldn't even know you then. Being 7 <laughs> foot is yeah. painful. It's annoying, unpractical, no clothes ever fit me, can't fit in a car, can't fit in a normal seat on a plane. These seem like respectable problems. It's a ridiculous take. We wouldn't be talking about you if you weren't 7-1. You're a millionaire because you're 7-1. You're in the NBA because you're 7-1. Mm. I'm assuming he's kidding. I'm assuming... I mean, 4-5 four, four is also, a little... Also, he could have said 5-5. Five, 4-5 five. <laughs> yeah, four five is... Different. Yeah, no, this is... this is. I don't know what he's even trying to do here, but this makes zero sense. But his complaints seem valid, like all those things. Although you don't need I mean, to I'm tall. I'm 6-9. It sucks to sit in a... There's cars that you well, definitely When was in. the last time you sat in a normal seat on a plane? Well, six months out of the year, he's on a private jet. Thank you. So, and that's a good point. It's configured for giants. That's this. This is this is ridiculous. No. <laughs> the clothes thing I have wondered about. You have to get everything made, right, or tailored at least. Yeah, that for seems sure. annoying to me. Uh, I think you do too at four or five. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can buy like kid stuff. <laughs> Lose, lose. <laughs> Lou. Lose, lose, uh, life. Darvin Ham. That's true. You should have picked a better That's one. That's a ridiculous four, comment. Four or five. He wanted us to feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me a break. Maybe somewhere in the middle is where he should have gone with that. Like, yeah. five, eight. Five, eight's normal and fine. I mean, halfway would be like six feet. Oh, like six me. Feet. Yeah. And I'm perfectly okay with everything, and I still have issues on airplanes as well. So, there you go. <laughs> This is such a sad episode. Uh, Darvin Ham recently said this about LeBron James. Quote, do no disrespect to anyone, but he's the best quarterback in the league. Is there anyone better, Lou? I'd have to agree with Darvin Ham on oh. this one. Um, Darvin Ham. Yeah, I mean, defensively, you can, you can hear LeBron on TV being a quarterback, um, being a safety back there, making sure the defense is in order, communicating at a high level. And offensively, we've always seen him pick um, offenses apart and being a floor general. And so... Uh, I don't know who he would have been able to disrespect by saying this. I think a lot of guys in the NBA would agree. This man was literally telling AD how to like guard the post, how to score. Yeah, oh yeah. He, he, He's coaching he, everybody. He is the best quarterback in the NBA. I don't know. We should ask Trey Murphy the third and make sure before we uh, do all right. that because I don't know what he thinks. Um, we're gonna go around the league. Lakers, Mavs, big game tonight. Um, both both of them sitting at 14-9, 14-8. Austin Reeves was on yesterday. He said that they didn't think that they would be hanging a banner, um, and it turns out he was not right. They are. I mean, we mentioned earlier, but yes, next next Monday against the Knicks, they're going to hang an in-season tournament championship banner. And it's going to be a different shape, a different color. Um, it's only going to be a one banner thing where if That's they smart. win in future years, they'll just add the year on later. And I think Lakers have always been the team. You know, you're going to only celebrate championships. There's not going to be any banners for conference finals. And uh, you're not going to give a banner for divisions. But this is, a, this is a big deal for the league. I think this is a big deal around the league. I, I, I think whoever would have won it would have put up some form of honoring for it. So we know how much of a deal and how big, you know, the NBA wants I wonder, do they this. do the whole ceremony where they introduce all the coaches and players? No. I don't I, so. well, I only if they give them their money, which we, we heard is also not going to be. I wonder. That, that would be interesting. That though. would Imagine, be awesome. like, rolling out. 
<laughs> a cart of, of money. I'd be Heck down yeah. for it. Right? I don't I know if it'll be that. safe, you know. I'd be down for it. <laughs> give, give everybody a briefcase. I didn't think about that. You're right. That'd no, be great. A lot of problems that would probably make. Um, so, Lakers, obviously, with the in season tournament win, I'm wondering if it did anything to change your mind as far as their capabilities for winning it all this season. Uh, yeah, I think it's a tall task, but I think depending on the moves they make, how quickly Gabe Vincent, so he's returning soon. But when you look at the Western Conference standings, Minnesota's one, Oklahoma City's two, Dallas is three. Crazy. I think Lakers are better than all three of those teams. So when you look at the where, where everyone's at, yeah, I think they have a real chance. They still have to go through the Nuggets. Uh, you know the Clippers are going to make a run. So I think the Lakers are right there. As long as LeBron James can keep doing what he's doing, we see more of Anthony Davis in the end season tournament championship and they're getting contributions from everybody from D'Lo from Reeves yeah they're a balanced team that are are primed to win it Mavs Kyrie Irving out who steps up I need a four or five Derek Lively to step up <laughs> <laughs> spirit I, I think he uh I think he becomes more of a pick and roll threat than he's already been um I think they lock in <laughs> my bad I think they lock in with Luca um and get Derek Lively going Playing a little better. Seth Curry is getting back to, back in the swing of things. Um, numbers are down right now, but I feel like this is a great opportunity for him to find his rhythm going forward in the season. Also, I thought this was going to be like the breakout year for Jaden Hardy, and I oh. feel like his minutes have been inconsistent. He he showed flashes last year and this summer that he can be that score that can go and get you 20, 30 points, and he hasn't done that. Josh Green, same thing. I was looking for both of these young guards to kind of step up. Now Kyrie Irving's out. Now's your chance. Now is your chance. Uh, another game tonight, Warriors Suns. Biggest challenge as they start to implement Bradley Beal Chandler, what will it be for this team? It's just going to be a little bit of everything offensively. How are they going to get into their offense? Who's going to play point guard? Uh, how are the rotations going to work? Who's going to be the odd man out? Like, is, is Bates Diop going to now not play? Grace Allen's minutes are going to fluctuate. You know, everything's going to kind of alter a little bit, but this is a luxury. It's a great problem for them to have. I hope all three of them, you know, can, can make that return and, and, and just see how explosive they can be. Because when you look at it, they're all like these scoring wings that can post up, that can space the floor, that can handle on pick and roll. So you don't really need a true point guard. So I'm not too concerned about that. Who are they going to guard? Are they going to help on the pick and roll? Someone's going to be open, right? You're not going to be able to double team all three of these guys. So that is the huge luxury that they have, and it's going to be exciting to watch. It's a good problem to have. Uh, we have a quick break right now. When we come back, we're wrapping running things up. up. Running run it back. back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. I went on a date with this girl one time. I forget where we were going. Where was it at? Might have been in like Chicago or something like that. We went on a date. I got to the got to the spot, right? We were just sitting at the bar, waiting for our table, getting drinks, whatever. She opened up her phone. The last thing she had on her phone was Aaron Gordon's net worth. That's what this takes. I mean, first of all, <laughs> privacy screen. That's your number one lesson. And number two, what? This is normal. That's this, gross. Yeah, this well, I don't know why he's surprised. He seemed a little, well, it seemed like it's happened, but he was just recollecting one particular lady. Does this I, really, like, have you caught anyone? No, like, they just tell you. I'm sorry? Yeah, it just goes without being said. You know for the most part that this is what they're after, which is funny. Me and Lou just thought, like, what are you getting? So you're sad. not getting money if you're going on I ain't going to give you none of it. I'm you rich, know. not you. you so look up whatever you want to look up. It's gross and thirsty. <laughs> It's called window shopping. It's yeah, called, that's what it's called. And by the way, we, we I, I, you Google her too. Like, but it's just funny that she literally didn't even have the decency to. Yeah, if we, X out. If we Google her, I'm sure that's not her first NBA date. I can't yeah. even defend it. By the way, as the sole <laughs> chick up here, it is what it is. Mm. Uh, we'll be back Hate tomorrow. To see it. <laughs> run it up, run it back, yeah. run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it.